So, recently I've been uh, getting into a bit of uh, Famicom collecting, which is a completely new thing for me. Um, I recently got an AV Famicom, one of these little beauties here, um, and that is the Japanese version. Um, also known as the top loader, the American version is known as the top loader. So that's basically inside, it's just a Famicom um, with a top loading cartridge slot. You haven't got that stupid NES style uh, VCR front loading nonsense that always goes wrong. So after getting that, the first thing I thought was uh, I need some controllers. I got a couple of the original dog bone style ones with it, which are great. But I wanted controllers with auto fire because I'm a shoot 'em up fan, and uh, as everyone probably knows by now, auto fire or turbo fire, whatever you want to call it, is pretty much essential if you don't want to get arthritis so you don't want your thumb to fall off when you're playing shoot 'em ups. So the first controller I got was this one here, which is an AliExpress special. Now uh, I'll put a link to it um, in the description. Uh, this was super cheap, uh, somewhere around five pounds. So it'll be, it'll be in American dollars, it'll be somewhere between five and ten dollars. As you probably know, the prices keep changing on AliExpress and sites like that. Anyway, but any but suffice to say, it's very cheap. And uh, I just took a kind of a punt on it, really. Um, I it looked okay in the pictures, had a few good reviews, but you know, who knows if you can trust reviews on AliExpress? So I went for it. Um, yeah, as I, as I said, it's a negligible cost, so uh, if it had been rubbish, you know, I would have just been able to live with wasting the money, but it actually turns out to be very good. Now, the construction is light, so there's barely any weight to it. Now, I don't mind. I can put up with that. I spent $5 or so on it, you know, I'm not going to complain. I was kind of half expecting it not to be... Uh, very solid but apart from the fact it's light it's uh, I mean you can't really fault it in any other way it's certainly strong like there's no flex in it very little actually no flex at all I would say no more flex than an official controller from Nintendo or Sega um, now there's no kind of branding on this so if you do find it online it's likely to be named under a hundred different names so just go by what it looks like here. Should be easy enough to see this bright yellow if you're looking through uh, AliExpress or what have you. The four buttons and the eight bit, the very, uh, very uh, vague eight bit name there written on there. So what's what's the main thing to say about this? Right. Well, the D pad, very important part of uh, Joypad, obviously. And the D pad is absolutely brilliant on this. It's um, responsive. It's tight, it, uh, it reacts well, it doesn't get stuck in any awkward positions. And um, I've been testing it on, on space shooters, you know, the, the type um, Crisis, Force, um, Gradius, games like that where you need to be able to move around very quick and very accurately. And it's absolutely brilliant. So this D-pad, I've got no complaints about it at all. And I really am saying that. Um, I've completely recommend this. Now, I can't vouch for longevity. I've only had this for about a month, and it's been perfect for that month. But, of course, one risk you're going to take with cheap controllers like this is that they might be good for a while, but they might not last very long. So, all I can say is that for the month I've had it, it hasn't got any worse, and it's uh, still in the same condition it was when I got it. So, D-pad... Uh, 10 out of 10. I'm not exaggerating there. I really mean that. Very good D-pad. Um, start and select buttons. Not great, but I mean, how much does it really matter with start and select? Uh, they protrude quite a long way, as you can see. I mean, they work. There is nothing wrong with them in that respect. They work every time, but they're a little bit kind of wobbly. Uh, you know, how it's with these cheap buttons sometimes. Um, they have quite a long travel, a needlessly long travel, um, but they work. Um, I d you might not be wanting to play a game where you have to use a select button a lot, like a, like a fire button or something, but I mean, I don't know, I haven't tried any games like that, so I can't really say. But uh, 
not great, but you know, acceptable. They work, you know, start, select. What can you say? It works. Um, so those buttons, I don't know, average, I would say. Average for a cheap controller. Now, back to something a bit more important, the actual main fire buttons. Now these are good. They've got quite a long travel, but they are nice and responsive. They've got kind of a nice soft landing when you reach the uh, full, when you press them in all the way. A little bit of give, but not too much. And uh, I've got no complaints about them. They've got a concave style there, as you can see. And this controller has, so it's got A and B, and it's got Turbo A, Turbo B. Now, there's, I mean, what can you say? Right, I'm going to talk about this controller afterwards, which is a, a higher quality and kind of vintage device, Hori. Um, now, the advantage of having these fixed firing rate buttons here is that there's no buggering around when you're in the middle of a game you might want to swap from single fire to turbo fire. You can just do it instantaneously. Go from there to there, no switches to turn on and off. I'm sure everyone that's used turbo controllers in the past knows that can be a bit of a nightmare when you're in the middle of a frantic shoot 'em up to have to move your finger over to uh, use a turbo on off switch or a speed variation switch. And it's pretty much impossible when you're in the middle of a load of bullets. You can't take your eyes off the screen for a second. So, um, these are great for that because you can just, without even looking, you can just go from that to that and immediately you've got turbo fire and then back to single fire again. But obviously the downside of these is they are fixed rate turbo fire, meaning some games might not like the rate um, that these are fixed at. Now I haven't come across that myself, but I'm sure, again, if you're a turbo uh, joypad user, you'll know what I mean. Some games... The way they're programmed, they just do not like certain firing rates or ways that certain turbo fire buttons work. And the worst comes to the worst. Sometimes you can put a turbo fire on or try and use one in the game and it won't even fire at all. Uh, plug in a different game, exactly same controller, turbo fire works great. So it all comes down to the game. So that's the one downfall having these fixed rate uh, buttons that you can't change at all is that some games might not like them. But I've played all three uh, Famicom Gradius games and they work great. And a few other shoot 'em ups, um, Twin Cobra comes to mind, works great. So, all in all, for a cheap $5 to $10 controller with the uh, NES style 7 pin plug on it, and admittedly quite a short cable, but that's pretty par for the course for Japanese controllers. One of those things you just got to put up with to get an extension lead. Um, I would highly recommend this. It's the best cheap Famicom controller I have found so far. And it's after having gone through about four. Um, this one over here, for instance, very similar, but rubbish. D-pad, rubbish. Goes for the same kind of prices as the yellow one. Um, rubbish. Don't get that one. Get that one. Right. And uh, just to finish off, here's a uh, genuine bit of vintage tech from the 80s Famicom days, which, as you can see, has a Famicom 15-pin um, plug on it, which is designed for the single port that you get on the old Famicom or on the AV Famicom. Because, um, obviously, the original Famicom had unremovable joypads. So this goes into the same port as a light gun and what have you on the Famicom. This one came boxed. Got it for a good price, actually. Um, just took my time. These come up on eBay all the time. So you don't need to rush into getting these. Get one when you see one at a price that you like. Um, the, the, the usual candidates of these Japanese people that sell um, stuff on eBay, they'll be listing two or three of these a day, I found. So uh, after getting, so just watch them basically, watch for what they go for if they're in an auction, watch for what they go for for buy it now prices, and just wait, because apparently, even now, there's hundreds of these floating around in Japan, so you do not need to spend a lot on it. Now this cost about £15, I would say, with the box. 
So this is a Hori controller and it has got the built-in uh, built-in built um, turbo but they are slider they are slider style now as opposed to the fixed buttons here we've got the slide the variable rate sliding style now there's not much to say really um, the buttons on here are all better those buttons are great um, it's the model HJ10 by the way you see that there Hori Commander Black right so A and B these buttons are great slightly better than the buttons on the, this cheap one um, they don't have a needlessly long travel uh, feel really responsive uh, I'm lucky this controller is in such good condition actually it did kind of look like when I took it out of the box like it had hardly been used D-pad now the D-pad is excellent now to be honest the D-pad on this cheap controller is a bit more raised and excellent this one is basically exactly the same as an original nest pad now I might actually prefer this one slightly more it's bigger I mean I've got quite big hands so for a start the big size of this one is good now this is uh, much smaller but it's not too small it's the size you'd expect if you're used to an NES controller but it's about as good as an NES controller so it's good and it works um, so if you like the NES controller d-pad then you know you're going to get a good controller with this start and select buttons much better than these you can see these ones stick out about half an inch god knows why you know you think they want to save money on rubber on a cheap control and not waste it but anyway um buttons are again well i guess you could say the whole pad is basically equivalent to a good quality um newish uh, original nes controller so the only real standout uh, thing to say about this above a, a good you know good condition nes control is it's got the variable firing rates here and they work so you've got obviously to the extreme left that's uh, no auto fire at all that's for b that one's for a and you've got all the way to maximum now I don't I can't say what how many shots a second that is. Maybe there's information on the internet out there to tell you what the maximum short speed of this controller is, I don't know. But you know what I was saying before about the disadvantages of having fixed rate are all negated by having these variable rate speeds. So if you have a game that doesn't like uh, so you might start on maximum, say got a new game, want to see what the turbo fire on a new game's like, whack them over to maximum, fire and the game the way the game's coded just doesn't like the maximum speed and as i said before sometimes it might not fire at all which seems uh, pretty mad when you think about it put auto fire on and it actually stops the stops the bullets from firing at all but it can happen so you've got the choice to gradually adjust the uh, firing rate until you get a rate which is good the rate's not going to not too much not too little bullets aren't falling over themselves to come out or getting clogged up as as i'm sure you've experienced with turbo fire before sometimes when it's slightly too fast the bullets the uh, game doesn't react very well on it the turbo fire will work but the bullets kind of get clogged up the i imagine that the the rate of the firing kind of just clogs up the game code a bit and it kind of results in sporadic firing so having these variable rate sliders here is great it means you can get it exactly where you want it now the downside of this is of course you've got to look at these while you're playing and uh, shoot them up my favorite style of game very rarely do you have the time to look at the uh, position of a slider while you're playing the game uh, let alone turn it on and off um, but actually see where it where its position is on the gauge when you're in halfway through a game and put it where you want it is basically impossible so you can't win really um you know this is overall it's a better controller than this it's much better made nice and heavy um it's sort of you know a, a original um well respected brand hori been around for you know god knows 30 40 years making third party controllers um this is great for 15 to 15 to 20 dollars 
this is great for five to ten dollars what i would say is get both of them um and you will quickly find out which game this is best for and which game this is best for so yes uh two excellent value controllers of course don't forget that uh, you may or may not be able to use this on a original on an American or PAL NES because it has the 15 pin plug. Now you can I don't actually know if you can get adapters. But I'm guessing probably can. It shouldn't be too hard. Maybe you can get an adapter for 15 pin to uh, 7 pin NES. I don't know. But obviously consider that before you buy one of these. Don't get caught out there. So yeah, there you go. Little Famicom control around up there and uh, thank you for watching keep an eye out for the next video cheers